Good day and welcome. You're watching Focus On with myself, Balisa Mufuking. As the 2023 African Development Bank's annual meetings draw to a close in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, the conversation around mobilizing private sector financing for climate and green growth in Africa remains top of mind. While the continent's GDP growth is projected to rise to 4% this year, private sector financing in Africa is lower than in other parts of the world. President of the African Development Bank, Akin Wumi Adesina, says two point seven trillion dollars is needed by 2030 if the continent is to adequately finance its climate change needs. CNBC Africa and reporter Tanya Habimana spoke to Hind Choki, head of ESG Global Credit Markets West and head of financial markets Minip at Standard Chartered about Africa's lack of bankable projects when it comes to mobilizing capital for green growth amid the continent's escalating debt burden. Let's listen in. So one of the things that has been coming back over and over again as a discussion point during this annual meeting is the lack of bankable projects when it comes to mobilizing capital for green growth and climate financing. How big of a problem is this? So it is a big problem actually because when you think about the bankable projects across Africa, there are very, very few. And this is why what we see is that there is a tendency for the multilateral development banks to go and grab these projects and do it themselves, which crowds out private capital somehow. So what needs to happen to, in order to scale um, private capital into emerging markets is that we see a lot more of those projects being blended and financed together uh, between private finance and, um, and uh, multi multilateral development banks, actually. It is a very big problem in, uh, in Africa, and we really need to work on the projects, on the size of the projects. You don't want also to push Africa to take too much debt, like we have seen in many countries and in Sri Lanka, etc. And, and not um, that this debt goes into non-returns projects, projects that do not return capital to the shareholders. So you need to size those projects with the economies that you're targeting. So that speaks to the importance of public-private partnerships enable in enabling uh, climate financing. But the other aspect of that, and in fact of financing in general, is that of de-risking, is how the perceived risk towards investing in such projects is just high, yeah. um, with um, investors being wary of the returns that they can make. How are you approaching this? Yeah, and it's a bigger problem because the cost of capital across Africa is getting higher and higher. We heard uh, during the conference, uh, Mr. Mohyeddin say that each and every African country has some sort of a debt bubble coming up and they are uh, dealing with it, you know, so it is becoming a bigger issue. And the way we can deal with it is through blended finance, through combining multilateral um, capital with private capital and through working together to deliver what's most needed for a green growth in, uh, in Africa. And the, the other thing that I'm curious to hear from you is how is Standard Chartered approaching green financing in, in general? What are some of the projects that you're working on? So sustainable finance is, uh, is really important at Standard Chartered and I think it's been championed for many years at the top of our organization. Um, Bill Winter, he's, uh, he's been uh, chairing the task force for scaling voluntary carbon markets and he's our CEO. So it's, uh, it's been really championed by the very top at Standard Chartered. Um, we've done many projects, uh, for example, we're very good at wind projects. We closed one of the projects here in Egypt last year, 500 megawatt in November 2022. We've done a project in Angola where we gave, we, it gave access to potable water to 2 million people the, in uh, the, the BITA project in Angola, which is also an adaptation finance project. Uh, so we're doing a lot and I think the uniqueness of Standard Chartered is because we're so entrenched in emerging markets, we tend to help our clients in their transition, in their know-how, and we accompany them throughout this transition so that they are more aware of the opportunities. 
And I understand that you've been looking at this for quite a while um, when it comes to green projects, uh, climate uh, projects. What would you say are the biggest opportunities for the African continent to be able to leverage and capitalize on the opportunity that we have at hand? I think the opportunity is huge, really, because if you think about it, uh, Africa ho has all the resources. They have uh, wind, they have uh, a lot of sun, uh, they have the power to, 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 have, to build uh, green hydrogen projects. Uh, geothermal is very big in Kenya. Kenya has 80% of their uh, uh, capacity coming from renewables, actually. I think it's huge, and I think one more thing is to realize that with this new re renewable energy, it's a lot harder to transport than the traditional forms of energy like fossil fuel. So that means if you build your factories in Africa, um, you are able to transform this energy locally and not have to transport it, then you have an advantage and then you can export. So there is a huge opportunity for Africa to industrialize with the green transition. And while I have you, I'd like to get your impressions on the annual meeting so far. I found it amazing. I'm, uh, you know, it's uh, focused on green for Africa. I think it's fabulous that the debate, I feel, has evolved from Africa should have a, um, a right to develop using fossil fuel into Africa has a huge opportunity for green growth. And that's my takeaway from the meetings and I really enjoyed being here. Tanya also met up with Catherine Bovia duvoir Managing Director of Public Sector and Development Organizations at Standard Chartered Bank, says the importance of green development in Africa is agreed upon across all sectors, but private sector mobilization is crucial to realizing this consensus. She adds that capital markets have not performed in the same way of the past two years owing to the COVID-19 pandemic and the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict. However, capital financing needs to take a quantum leap forward. Let's listen in. A big focus has been around private sector mobilization and particularly the mobilization of private sector capital. But why does it even matter? I mean, what's your perspective on this? Why is there such a big focus on getting the private sector involved in green projects? Well, it's crucial. And what has been amazing is that there is a remarkable consensus on the diagnosis on what needs to be done on the importance of climate, the importance of green development for Africa. And everyone agrees. And when I say everyone, if you look at three ki kinds of players, you have the countries, mm -hmm. you have the private sector, and you have the official sector. And all those stakeholders agree on basically the situation. You have capital ready to be deployed, you have countries with projects ready to be financed and still it does not happen. So basically it's crucial just to sit down and think how best can we make the capital at work. And this is why it's, it's amazingly timely that and we meet here. I find it interesting that it doesn't happen as you say. You have three parties that want to work together but it hasn't happened. What would you say have been the main issues? Maybe I should qualify. It has happened, but we need to scale it up. Mm -hmm. We need to make it a big, I would say, a, a quantum leap. Let's put it that way. And we need also to think what are the best instruments which allow this cooperation between private and public money. Public funding has been going on. Private funding also has been going on, but with the COVID crisis and with the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, capital markets have not been playing the role that they were playing yeah. over true. the last two years. And suddenly people need to think outside, of, outside the box. Mm. And so speaking of uh, private capital and projects and also what's happened in the last couple of years, um, this has been coming up a lot, is the lack of projects, the lack of bankable projects. Um, so what, what, in your opinion, needs to happen to ensure that um, more projects are created that are bankable? You know, it's interesting because we're, we're, we're just meeting with countries and they were telling us we have a list of projects. So all, a lot of countries have a lot of projects. And we all know that in infrastructure, 
the needs are tremendous. And we all know that in green development, in adaptation, in transformation, in preparation, the needs are, um, you know, huge. Mm. So it's not so much the fact that we don't have projects, but we have to make those projects in such a way that it's easier for investors and banks to participate. Just as an example, if you have 30 projects, if a country has 30 projects, if I am an investor, and if I work on one project which does not go through, I have lost quite some time. Yeah. So in a way, it's just a matter of process, you know, sitting down and discovering how you share the risks, mm. and also, because that has been done, but also how you move forward. Yeah. And how are you approaching it at Standard Chartered? Well, in a way, we are ideally positioned because we have been on the continent for more than 150 years. So we know the territory. We have the teams. We have, you know, we are in uh, 59 countries worldwide. We're extremely focused on emerging markets. Mm -hmm. And we have the capacity, but we also have the will. And we have our strategy is basically focusing on sustainable development. Our strategy is also focusing on Africa. Mm -hmm. So, and we are putting our balance sheet at the service of the country. So it's not as if, you know, we needed to change, but we need probably, and basic from, for me, I think we're ideally positioned to be this sort of go-between mm -hmm. and to be working with public sector institutions and also private sector institutions. We have started doing it a long time ago, but I mean, we, we would like to scale it up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And your participation at the AFTB annual meetings, I mean, what would you say has been the highlight so far? You know, what was really heartwarming was the fact that everyone genuinely wants to do good and yeah. wants to find a way forward. You have investors, you have countries, you have authorities, you have the public sector, private sector is represented. And everyone agrees on the way forward in the sense that on the mission, mm -hmm. on the stakes, you know, climate cannot wait. And it's as if, you know, everyone was ready in a room, physically, just to make a start. Yeah. And this is very, very, you know, encouraging. And it, we're grateful for that. Brilliant. Brilliant. That concludes today's episode. Stay tuned for more African Development Bank annual meetings coverage from the CNBC Africa team. Take care.